Hey you guys, it's Janice Wilson Hughes. We're back in my Evolution Stoneware Pottery Studio to finish up these coasters. So I've got my clear glaze here. This is a commercial Cone 6 clear glaze and I'm brushing this right onto these coasters just on the inside. As I mentioned before, I'm not glazing the outside and because I'm not glazing the outside, that allowed me to go ahead and fire these up to Cone 6 before I put the glass in and the reason I wanted to do that is that this clay this earthen red high water clay has a really high shrinkage rate at cone six and I wanted to go ahead and get all that shrinkage out before I put the glass in because I didn't want it to shrink around the glass and cause any kind of issues with sharp edges on the glass or the glass popping out so I went ahead and took this all the way up to cone six these are still hot from unloading the kiln. They're, they're cool enough to touch, but they're hot, like hot coffee. And that allows me to put this glaze on a vitrified surface. The surface is no longer porous, so it can't absorb the water from the glaze. But because it's warm, it's causing the moisture in the glaze to evaporate off. You can see it's drying here. Whereas if I just brush this onto cool clay, it might be kind of a mess and take a really long time to dry, or I might have to use a heat gun to get it to dry. So doing this right as I'm unloading the kiln works out really well. And the reason for applying this clear glaze is to act as a glue between the clay and the glass. I just want to make sure it really sticks in there. And glazes are formulated to stick onto clay Whereas the raw glass, not necessarily, it might, although it might pop off. So I thought this would be a little insurance policy to try to make sure that my glaze really, or my glass stays in place inside these coasters. These are the types of glass I'm going to be working with. I did fire this little bitty test here and I put the glass in pretty thick and uh, it seems to be all right. This one actually had a white gloss glaze on the inside. That clear glaze that I applied has dried out and I'm just going to load these up with some pieces of this glass fret. My intention here isn't to put in enough glass to melt it all the way to the top of the rim. I just want to get enough in here to get a good coating, maybe a millimeter or so thick. I could probably get away with even less glass. But I'm going to be firing this to the temperature where this glass actually liquefies. So it's going to flow and spread out and coat the whole inside of the coaster. And I'm mixing the colors so that hopefully I get a cool variability. And you can see I'm wearing, these are cut gloves. They might just look like cloth gloves, but these are actually cut gloves that you can't um, cut yourself with a knife or scissors or anything through these. And that's making me much more comfortable handling this glass because I've cut myself plenty of times in the past doing silly things. And I use these for some other projects that I do and uh, Definitely went ahead and put these on now while working with this glass. So I'm just going with my gut here, but I'm going to do about that much glass in there and uh, just melt this right up. So ideally, it would be a great idea to do this on a surface where you don't work with clay, just in case you get any little tiny glass shards on your surface that you don't realize and then later get that into your clay and then you could cut yourself. So uh, with that said, I am going to vacuum this surface off later using my shop vac that has a HEPA filter in it. Um, 
and I'll do that at a point right when I'm about to leave the studio just in case I stir up any particles in the air, any clay particles. I've got these loaded in the kiln now and I'm going to fire them to cone 6 in my Scott 1027 kiln and I'm just going to use the pre-programmed medium glaze fire schedule. Here's some final thoughts for you guys. Feel free to go ahead and glaze your coasters with any kind of colors that you want. Just try it and see what happens. You don't have to use special glass like I did. You can use old bottles or jars broken into pieces. Always be safe when you're working with glass so that you don't cut yourself or contaminate your workspace. You don't have to pre-fire your coasters all the way to cone six before you add the glass. You can do this on bisque. That was just the way I wanted to go about it. Glass melted onto clay generally crazes and crazed surfaces are never considered food safe. So don't try this technique on pots that you want to use with food. And number one, if you want to try this yourself, go crazy, try lots of different things, experiment with your own clays, your own glazes, and your own glass, and your own firing techniques. It's hard to say what will happen exactly with all the different material combinations and firing schedules out there. So run some experiments and have fun. And if you do choose to sell these to other people, just be sure that the surface is not sharp enough to cut anyone. I made these just for myself, but if you decide to make something like this to sell to other people, it's a really good idea to keep them around for a while after you fire them, just to make sure that the glass doesn't become sharp in any way, because it will continue to craze over time for a while after you take it out of the kiln. So. Always be responsible with work that you're selling to other people. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was just a fun project that I did for myself and maybe this will give you guys some ideas out there to do something fun as well. Hope everyone is doing great. Stay safe. Sending out lots of love. See you guys soon. Bye.